Good morning. Thank you for having me here. I'm Farah Kamengar. I am a board certified dermatologist. I'm the department chair of dermatology in the Palo Alto uh, Medical Foundation, and I'm the CEO of DermGPT, which is what we'll be talking about this morning. So DermGPT is a large language model, as you can guess with my background centered around dermatology. Um, I'm also an engineer. I've been involved in health tech for over 15 years, which is why th these two worlds have collided for me. But just a quick background, and I think a lot of us at this conference have touched on these topics of why healthcare and technology has moved a little bit more slowly in the clinical space. Um, and this is a slide I like to kind of present from how fast the technology has grown in the past five or six years or so. So healthcare, I like to say 1.0 in like the 1970s was really on basic paper charts, but even today, a lot of our colleagues are still using paper charts. So even though we've kind of gone to healthcare 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, and I'd like to put DermGPT in the 5.0, we really, in, with generative AI, are at the forefront of things. Um, we still have colleagues who haven't really caught up very well. Um, EMRs and electronic medical records are somewhere in that healthcare 3.0 phase where many of clinics are now, but not everyone. Um, and I always like to think back to the day that um, I was at UCSF when the electronic medical records rolled out, the switch from the paper records, and it was a little bit of mayhem. You had you know, the heads of all the departments kind of running around, flailing their hands around. So it, didn't, it, it wasn't a smooth transition in the clinical space when technology came. I'd like to just give that background um, in the terms of we created DermGPT. We launched our product in August of this year, we have a team of physicians and engineers who work together. So it's very physician driven. So we launched it in, in August and we had over 2000 dermatologists immediately adopt this technology and use it pretty frequently. Um, some of these dermatologists are still even using the paper charts in the office. So I, I, I like to say that we it was a small proof of concept that physicians are not against technology. We actually love it. A lot of these physicians in their offices with paper charts have smartphones, not flip phones or those 80s phones. So if technology is made with physicians in mind and problems are solved, physicians will adopt it. They will use it and patient care will improve. Um, and that's the space that that, that we, we, we feel we, we filled in the dermatology space. So just a little bit about machine learning and generative AI. I won't take too much of the time on this because I think this, this crowd knows this very well. Um, but I think we all know artificial intelligence is basically just teaching a machine to do what humans are able to do. And generative AI has made it able for us to do this so much faster. Um, so traditional machine learning, which I worked on many years ago, it took a very long time and a large budget to turn to teach these little things. Um, I equate it to like learning as a child to speak. If you were to learn every single word, it would take forever, but a child's brain makes inferences and learns from different um, contexts. And that's how generative AI works to the point where a two-year-old can have a small conversation with you. That's an amazing thing. So generative AI has really advanced that. Um, with Derm GPT, what we use, we harness this uh, technology, but we put in technology specific to dermatology. We used over 3,000 peer-reviewed articles and texts that are verified by us to make the data a lot better. So a little bit about just the background of GPT, the GPT technology has come along. So that's within artificial intelligence. So GPT-3 and then GPT-4 is just a larger set of data. So it's much smarter. Derm GPT on the very right bottom, we've put more than 3,000 peer-reviewed articles in there. So it gives you very specific dermatology information. We have a group of residents now who are working on a study, having it take our American Board of Dermatology exam. So I'm really actually excited to see the how it does compared to dermatologists. And a little bit, I'm, I'll go over this quickly as well, kind of at the bottom where you see the portion of your data. So that's kind of what we've done as opposed to the traditional GPT of unsupervised machine learning or supervised machine learning. We've taken a lot of DERM specific vetted data and we've put it into the large language model so that um, it's trustworthy. I think that's an, something that's very important to physicians. And the general competitors, like just chat GPT itself, they can make logical errors. Like you can say what's one plus two, it might you know tell you it's five, a logical error, or it can make a hallucination. So it's an error that sounds pretty good, but is not actually true. So for that reason, physicians, we, we really like things to be pretty correct. 
they have adopted a little bit of things like chat GPT, but not a whole lot. Whereas why they they love Durham GPT is that they really trust the information. It's sort of, if you put garbage in, you get garbage out. If you get good data in, you get good data out. And that's what we've done. And we also have um, prompts and sources for all the information that comes out. So it's very trustworthy. And I think physicians are loving it and it's really speeding up their clinical flow. Um, a lot of our medical assistants, biologic coordinators have started adopting this technology as well. And some have asked, well, will this just, will this take over my job? And I like to say, no, it won't, but it probably will take over jobs. Um, if you're, if someone is using gen AI, they'll have an advantage over a biologic coordinator, for example, who is not using um, gen AI. So this is the platform when you log in, it's, uh, you can just type in any free form type of question and it has our learn language model behind it. There's many use cases, pretty much endless. What physicians are using it mostly for are things like prior authorizations for medications, medical charting, coding support, that's medical coding, billing, clinical inquiries if you have a question, patient messages. We get lots of messages coming through us, especially if you are on um, electronic medical records, patient have easy access to you. Patient education, denial letters, scientific writing has actually been a huge one. That is a whole other area, actually, that um, there's a lot of rules and things being built around that of how you can use that in publications. And just a few kind of questions we asked it. So we asked, you know, who are you? And Derm GPT is like, I'm Derm GPT, a dermatology assistant AI. It'll basically answer any question that you have. This is a med dermatology medication. You can say, what is the mechanism of action of it? Maybe you're in clinic, you don't remember. It'll immediately tell you the answer. One step further, you might not remember maybe an older medication, what labs you need to check for it in clinic, but maybe you want quick access to it. This is a task that you might have traditionally put towards the end of clinic, which is what ends up happening for a lot of different tasks. And that's how physicians have three hours of work at the end of clinic. What we wanna do is rapid access, get that information, get it done, move on. So you can go enjoy your home life and not be burnt out. Just get the tasks done quickly because then they'll pile, especially if you're seeing 30, 40 patients. Patient queries, patients ask us lots of questions. So it's very easy to come up with an answer. The physician can review it, of course, to make sure it's factual and it's, it's really answering the patient's question. But it's been great at that, just coming up with pretty quick responses. We get all sorts of different things that I think of, like a patient asked here, is it safe to get the COVID vaccine while I'm on this other specific medication? We get questions like this a lot. Very easy for a learned language model to answer this with the right data behind it. This is a little video, I won't take too much time on it, but we have started enterprise um, uh, projects. This is one we're doing with, with one of our enterprise partners. Take the PSA screener. Have you ever had a swollen joint or joints? I won't take too much time on this, but she's basically going has for- Has doctor ever told you that you have arthritis? A questionnaire to try to pick up psoriatic arthritis. Have you had a finger or toe that was completely swollen? To okay. discuss your signs and symptoms. Your dermatologist may decide you need to see a rheumatologist, a doctor who specializes. So you get the point. I won't waste too much time on that. But it's a, we have lots of these different um, enterprise partnerships out now to try to detect disease. So questionnaires out to patients where we can detect things like if you have psoriasis, which is a skin condition, 15% can also have arthritis. They're not being screened at a high enough rate. So we have lots of these tools going out. We also are developing bots for shared medical decision making. So these are the patient features sides of what our technology can do. So I just wanted to show a quick, quick bit of that. And that's it. So I'll, I'll, I'll finish early there. Our next steps are, we are of course ever expanding our language models. So we're putting more than 3000 articles in there. We're constantly updating it. So it's the most up-to-date. We have our growing list of dermatologists and we have more and more joining every day. We have our enterprise options um, and these different projects that we're doing, which are really, really exciting. And we're doing some clinical trials around those as well to validate, as well as we're launching our publication. It's an open access um, publication that's that's been really exciting to work on. But thank you. Thanks for having me here and uh, listening to the Derm, Derm GPT and our.